The following program is a Creative Magic Network production. You're listening to the Frederick Bai Show, where sky is the limit and space is the place. Here's your host, Frederick Bai. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, sit down, relax, put your earbuds on. This is the Frederick Bai Show, and welcome, welcome, come on in. And this radio podcast is about unleashing your creativity. Yes, we talk to experts who step into the unknown. It is an inspirational, magical, intuitive radio podcast as we chat with charismatic enigmas. That's right, people, artists from around the globe, musicians, singers, radio hosts, business people, photographers, everything in between. I am Frederick by the man of the hour, the man with the power to switch to be sour and funky like a monkey. Hey. I sting like a bee, produce sweet honey, and I am pretty, and I am your favorite French Canucker. And as it is with uh, now every Friday, I'm going to share with you an article that I stumbled upon this week. You know, I always like to share stuff. I always like to share articles, and I decided to make my, you know, the Friday episodes, the Friday of. Well, the day I, sh- I share blogs or article. <laughs> and basically today, it's one of my favorite subjects. And, you know, I think it's a question that so many of us have. And is getting a creative writing degree, is a creative writing degree necessary? You know, school, it's like it's a complex for a lot of people to get a, to, to have a degree or not to have a degree. And a lot of people walk around with an inferiority complex their whole lives because they don't have a degree. They think that to be a great writer or to be a great anything, to make money, etc., to get published, you need a degree. Well, I'm here to say you don't. Okay, well... And this article uh, was written in uh, writersdigest.com, a website that I really, really uh, respect. And the uh, author of the blog was is uh, Jane Friedman. And uh, it was written on April 15, published on April 15, t- t- uh, 2009. So that's not very long ago. And she tells a little bit of her story. And I, you know, and Jane Friedman is somebody that I admire also, and she's a writer. And, um, you know, I, I just thought, you know what, it's very important. It's a subject I want to share with you. And she starts her blog by saying, I have a BFA in creative writing from the University of Evansville. I took a mix of literature and writing courses, got practical, practical experience as the editor of Evansville Review and University Crescent. And she said that she recently at the time commented to a group of friends on Facebook that if if she had to do it over again, she would not major in creative writing. And a college friend who had also majored in writing asked her why. And she shared those reasons with us. And she writes, the most valuable lessons I've learned in my writing life never came from my formal education in it. I've learned much more through practice and through reading what I love. Oh, thank God. Reading and practicing. Reading what I love. Isn't that cool? Yes, the best practice is love, passion, enthusiasm for what you do. I believe that. Um, and also, she writes, uh, I've also found that the writers I enjoy have some intense interest, uh, passion, or training that influences their style and point of view. And voice, it really sets them apart. Ain't that true for all you writers out there, man? Or I think anybody out there, like even for podcasters or uh, singers, musicians, you know, any type of, you gotta find your quote unquote voice. And yeah, you can only find. I think uh, there's somebody who, who said this a, a long time ago, uh, and you know, he said that. We were talking about school and stuff like that. And he he simply said, you know, school, the thing is, they cannot teach you the spark. They cannot teach you the spark. And it always stayed with me. You you either have the spark or you don't, you know. And, um, and yeah. And she also says, number three, that uh, she says that I was just too damn young when she went to creative writing. 
uh, which took creative writing courses. So lots of the writing was merely cathartic. And number four, she says, I also learned much more through teaching composition to freshmen. So what am I? So she she continues by saying, "So what major would I choose if I had to do it over again? Since you can improve your own writing simply by doing more of it. Plus, everyone gets better with age." She writes, "I'm not sure I even care. It it could be any major that provides something enriching, a different facet or perspective to my life thinking." And she ends the article with something that is so true, that rings so true to me. And it's something that, you know, if you've been listening to this show uh, for a while, you know, you know what it is. You know, I've talked about it so many times and it's something that really sometimes uh, turns me off or irritates me sometimes with artists. But she writes, given that business slash marketing skills are often found in successful writers, haha. That is a tempting choice. Sadly, most people think business and marketing are contrary to art and creativity. False. Okay, false. But So she writes, but two things to keep in mind. Marketing should be about a service provided to people, not something inflicting on people. (laughs) And she also writes, business is as much about people and psychology as it is the numbers. She says, I always like to quote Dana Goya on this point who once said the higher you get up the food chain, the more it's about qualitative judgment, not quantitative. And um, that said, she continues, getting a degree in writing can give you time and permission you need to focus on your writing. Plus, a great mentor is invaluable. But it doesn't help uh, you develop a writing career or help you get published, if that's what you're expecting. And, you know, I just want to come back to the uh, need when she says that getting a degree in writing can give you the time and permission, permission you need to focus on your writing. This is what I've learned. Um, I'm doing this podcast. uh, You know, I could easily say, hey, this podcast is a hobby. It's a a push it to the side and say, you know what? That's not very important, you know, and, and any other stress or problem that there is in my life. I could just push this podcast aside and say, hey, okay, bye-bye. But I don't because this podcast thing is is what I do. I give myself permission to do this. I give my, myself the time to do this as if it was a real job, you know, because it is a real job. I am providing valuable content. And I think it is the same, it's the same thing for Uh, novelists and writers so many writers they think that their work is not really important because you know i think it's often seen as a hobby it's often seen as but um i'm here to tell you treat it as a real job would you show up on time if if you know you had somebody you had a boss okay he says to you you have to be here at nine if you tell yourself look i'm gonna write at five in the morning at six in the morning would you you have to show up on time As if you had a boss, okay? So it's just my advice, just my point of view. I'm not here to tell you what to do. (laughs) But, um, you know, so I I think that she she really, Jane Friedman, she really write this wonderful article. I encourage you to check it out. Just uh, type, why not to get a creative writing degree? And uh, it's uh, from writersdigest.com. Uh, we had a wonderful week this week, and guys, uh, right before riding off, ride, riding off into the sunset, if you have a passion, you know something that fuels your curiosity, well, on top of getting fascinating interviews such as this one, straight, straight to your inbox. Uh, well, actually, there was no interviews today, <laughs> but uh, when you get was, on top of getting fascinating interviews uh, with uh, different artists and people, and get cool articles and insights like this straight to your inbox when you subscribe to our free creative magic community you will get super cool exclusive gifts in return such as the ebook happiness quotes by the ambassador of happiness herself maura sweeney one of our hosts and uh, this small book is really an anthology of 25 inspirational quotes about living a happy life from the inside out it's cataloged by yours truly the ambassador of happiness herself maura sweeney and further enhanced by her reflections And she offers information, anecdotal stories, and more to help underscore each contributor's quote. And she provides suggestions to help you incorporate 
these maxims into part of your mental landscape. You know, for me, I'm the best, I'm most creative when I'm I'm happy. You know, it's very important to keep my energy happy. So it's a very cool little book. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, go to frederickby.com. That's frederick with a C, by like bye-bye.com. And just enter your email. There's a green green uh, uh, page that will appear. And uh, you can get uh, the book for free. Right, for free. All right, guys. Uh, time to for me to say goodbye. And uh, don't forget, live with purpose, passion, fire, and love. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Frederick Bai Show. For more information, go to frederickbai.com. That's Frederick with a C, bye like bye-bye.com. Bye.